Hello everyone and welcome to Fifth North. I am Demir and today we're talking about the five things that I think every photographer should start out by investing in. Um, there's a lot of different things out there for photographers, uh, different accessories, different tools, and in my opinion these are the five things that you should start off with. I have a fancy mug. It's not coffee. Might be vodka. I don't know. It could be a fun video. We'll see. I'm just kidding. It's water. I'm just really excited to have a, a Fifth North mug. It's the, it's the little things in life. Anyway, let's, uh, let's jump in. All right, so first things first, number one on the list, uh, memory cards. So I've got the sweet uh, Peter McKinnon Nomadic uh, memory card case, which uh, I'll do a little review on later on when I'm covering some other things that this is associated with. But anyway, long story short, uh, if I flip this bad boy open, and, uh, right, memory cards. So, depending on your camera, um, you're gonna take SD, Compact Flash, Compact Express, uh, depending on what your camera uses, and uh, I think this is a really important piece that's often overlooked. People will get whatever's cheap, whatever's easy to get, and to me, it's an investment. So two things on that, one, you gotta have enough space to do what you wanna do. I would say there's nothing worse than, you know, you go out somewhere fancy for a shoot or maybe you traveled somewhere, or it's not a place you can get to super easy and then you run out of camera space. So then what, you gotta, uh, you gotta start deleting old stuff that maybe you're not ready to delete or you gotta not take as many photos and you, you know, in the back of your mind, you're constantly going, is this worth shooting? Am I gonna have enough space for later? What's coming up, you know, later in the day? Um, so I always say just have enough camera or camera space, have enough memory card space, that way you never have to worry about it. The other piece of the memory card space too is depending on your camera. So for example, I'm shooting on the um, Sony A7R uh, 4 and it has a dual card slot. So what I always wanna have is duplicate cards. So same card brand, same card speed, same card size. And I have my um, camera shoot um, redundant. So what that means is everything that I shoot is saved on the first card and then is copied to the second card. Um, or I guess technically it's written to both cards at the same time. But long story short, what that does is if I have, it's pretty rare that it happens, but if I do have a memory card failure, it's going to have a backup for me so I don't lose my content, whether it's video, photo, or whatever, right? So I think the biggest piece is having the right memory cards for your camera. That's the second part, right, is the speed. So depending on what you're looking to do, you're gonna need different speeds, uh, speed of cards. And I'll do a video, I think, uh, later on, it might be, might be cool to dive into exactly how these cards work, the different types of cards, the different speeds, but to keep it simple for this video, what you wanna make sure is that if you're shooting 4K, you have enough speed for that. If you have a high megapixel, fast frame rate camera, that you have enough speed for that as well. So um, there's also different types of cards as far as transfer speeds to the computer, but we'll, we can dive into that some other time. But long story short, memory card, if you don't have them, invest in them. Um, it's going to give you as much shooting, you know, ability as you want to have. And again, it's super, super important if you find yourself traveling or in a place where you just can't come back as easily. So you want to make sure you have um, as much as you can have. So for me personally, I have two 128 gig cards that I have in the camera, like I said, that are shooting redundant. I've got two backup 128 gig cards um, that I just carry with me in the um, in the pouch that I was just telling you about, and then. I actually have um, three other memory cards. These are actually not as fast. They're from my old camera. They're actually back from my Canon T2i days, so if you want me to date myself a little bit, there you go. Um, and then I've also got this whole little pouch here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's full of um, micro SD cards because every once in a while I have a you know action camera, uh, GoPro, DJI, whatever. And that's kind of where I where I keep those as well. So anyway, first thing on the list, memory cards. Make sure you have enough. All right, so number two on the list, um, just like you never want to run out of memory card space, I would say even more important than memory card space is battery power, right? If your camera runs out of juice, guess what? You're not shooting anything. You're not taking any video because your camera won't turn on. So um, once again, sweet little pouch. Um, again, I'll cover that later. But... Uh, set obviously matching with the memory card case but uh so for the sony i've got one two three plus the one in the camera so i've got four total batteries 
And you might say that's overkill, and I'll be honest with you, it probably is, but there's two pieces to that. One, um, it is a mirrorless camera, and they have um, electronic viewfinders, and a lot of times I shoot from the monitor itself on the back, so they drain battery quite a lot quicker than, um, than I'm used to back in my DSLR days. So having that extra battery is a good thing. But two, it's also really important for me to know that I can be anywhere doing anything and I'm never worried about battery life. Um, honestly, it's a pet peeve of mine. Like people who, um, you know, like their smartphone is sitting at like 4% all day. I can't do it. I don't have the um, the nerves or the, or the, I guess the calm for that. I get, I, I just need to be good, right? So like my phone is charged every night. I wake up, it's at 100%. I've always got a battery backup with me just in case because I never want to be in that situation where my devices aren't powered. And to me, something as important as my camera that I'm out trying to shoot, right? Having enough batteries is, is key. And actually on top of my regular batteries, um, I did just mention battery backups. I do have um, enough battery backups on my, um, you know, in my photography backpack to, man, I could probably charge my, my batteries up, all four of my batteries up twice. Um, so I could be gone for hours or days even shooting and I'd never run out of juice and that's that's kind of how I like it And then you might have noticed um, little stickers on the batteries, too um, These are actually Peter McKinnon stickers. Um, I've been meaning to actually change them out um, To to make fifth north uh, fifth north ones. I actually um, Totally side side story, but I actually make my own stickers. So I might plan to swap that out at some point. But these are actually kind of cool little little uh, Pete's Pirate Life stickers, but the point of it is um, when I put it in the case, right, and what's funny is I actually just messed myself up because one of them was dead, so I gotta check that later, but long story short, if I put it in this side up, I know the battery's still good to go. If I put it in this side up into the case, right, I know that that battery's dead and uh, I need to charge it. So it's a good way to keep track of my batteries, that way I know exactly what's going on how much juice is left, and, and like I said, that's especially important to me. If ever I'm traveling or I'm somewhere that I know I'm gonna be hours without plugging in this into a place, um, it gives me a, that peace of mind of knowing no matter what, between my memory card and my battery, I'll be able to shoot. Um, and again, I do recommend, you know, maybe not necessarily this one, um, but some sort of a case to keep track of your batteries is always a good idea. Plus it keeps them padded and protected from being dropped and, and stuff like that. So anyway, number two on the list, batteries, make sure you have plenty. All right, so number three on the list, um, and I think this one's often um, overlooked. I would say really everything on this list is kind of basic, but overlooked and I think it's really important. So that's why I'm making this list kind of basic. Um, and actually, you know what, I'm gonna do next week, I'm gonna do the five things that you shouldn't waste your money on right off the bat, but we can talk about that next week. So number three on the list, um, I just kind of went like this. Number three on the list, I, I'm working on my, my dexterity here. Um, number three on the list is gonna be editing software. So a lot of options out there. Um, really it's gonna be personal preference. It's gonna be budget, it's gonna be a lot of different things you can look at. Um, for me personally, I've been using Photoshop since 2004-ish something like that, so it's been like 16, maybe 17 years. So I'm really familiar with it, I'm really comfortable with it, I enjoy it, um, but I have been, um, as I mentioned in the intro, at least I think I did, I have been dabbling with um, with Lightroom. So trying to get into Lightroom, trying to get better with Lightroom. Um, I actually set up my entire catalog last night, got it organized, got all my file structure proper, which, just a little tidbit side note, before you get into any program, whether it's video editing, photo editing, whatever it might be, Make sure your file structure is right because it might seem insignificant in the beginning, but later on when you're running, you know, 1400 photos or, or 800 hours of video or whatever you might have, having it organized will save you so much time and, and, and just make you happier. So, um, but anyway, so different software out there. Photoshop and Lightroom is what I use. And actually I think Adobe's got a pretty sweet gig right now. If you um, do the photography only plan, they give you a pretty fat discount for getting Lightroom and Photoshop together as opposed to all the other apps being 20 bucks each, right? So I think that's a pretty good deal. You do have to pay for it monthly, so some people aren't huge fans of subscriptions. Um, I personally am a student right now, which is great because you can um, you can get the Adobe Student, which it's 20 bucks a month and you get all their apps, which um, to me, that's pretty crazy. So if you're a student, I highly recommend that because you can't really beat that deal. 
Um, if you're the kind of person who just hates monthly subscriptions and you don't want to pay for that, not a problem. I'd probably recommend um, Affinity Photo. Um, I'm actually a huge fan of Affinity Designer. It's their um, vector-based program. So Affinity Photo is uh, is one of those apps that, excuse me, that you uh, pay for once and then you're just good. I, I think it's like 50 bucks, um, but they've got different sales and things going on. And, and when this video comes out, we'll only be maybe a week or two away from Black Friday. So I'm sure there's going to be some sort of a Black Friday special where um, I think when I bought it, it was on Black Friday special and it was like 25 or 30 bucks, just in my opinion, a steal for that program. But it's a one-time payment and you're not having to, um, you know, having to pay for it monthly, which again, some people prefer. Um, and you know what, I'll probably just put some links um, that way you guys can, can find the software a little bit easier. There's a ton of stuff out there. There's uh, Luminar 4, which is the latest, I think. Um, I mean, shoot, even like iPhoto, you know, basic Windows photo editor. There's a lot of free ones out there. I think uh, GIMP is a free one. So a lot of different, um, as I punch my, make some noise there, as I, you know, anyway. Um, a lot of different programs out there. So pick what you like, pick what you, pick what you can afford, pick what you think is easy to use, and uh, slowly kind of you know work your way through it. And, and who knows, maybe you start with one and you slowly graduate and move up to the professional stuff, just depending on what your level of comfort is. But either way, you're gonna wanna have a way to organize your photos. You're gonna wanna have a way to edit your photos. Um, because let's face it, most of our photos don't come out perfect right out of the camera. You end up doing some sort of um, you know color grading or some sort of cropping or editing or um, you know, maybe you want to add a silly hat to your dog while he's standing on a photo. I don't know. Whatever you're into, but either way, get some software. It's a solid investment. And uh, yeah, number three on the list. I just realized for number four and five, I left them both upstairs. So I'm going to run upstairs, grab those. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Make sure I'm nice and pretty. I was running. So um, hopefully you guys didn't have to wait too long. Just kidding, I edited that part out, so you didn't just sit there and wait for me. Um, anyway, number four on the list, uh, we've got, it's kind of a two-piece, if you will. First, we've got the uh, the nose cleaner. It actually doesn't feel good at all. Um, yeah, that failed. Um, basically, it's a, I don't know what to call it. It's like a blowing, dusty thing, but you can, you know, blow air on your um, on your lens or... If you're cleaning your sensor or whatever you're into, so I'll place that there. And then um, microfiber cloths, right? I'm all about the product placement today, clearly. Um, actually, I got two stuck here, so we'll just take the one. I'll nicely place one for you guys to stare at. Um, but yeah, microfiber cloths, really important in my opinion. So between this and this, um, a way to clean, clean your lenses, clean your gear, um, clean your laptop, your cell phone screen, your filters, your whatever, right? You got to have some sort of soft material. Um, a lot of people, they'll, they'll drop a couple hundred, couple thousand dollars even on lenses, and then they'll use their t-shirt to clean it, which if your shirt is super soft, maybe, but I personally don't want to run the risk of scratching my lens. Um, I'm rocking a 12 to 24 uh, G Master on, on this setup right now uh, from Sony, and it took a while to save up for that lens. I don't really want to scratch it because my t-shirt wasn't soft enough, so microfiber cloths. And I have a lot of them actually too because after a while they get kind of, um, in my opinion, they get a little rough and they get a little dusty, and so I'll kind of retire them. I'll take them from being lens cloths to being, you know, my iPad or my phone that I don't care as much about. Um, as I do my lenses. So anyway, um, have a way to clean your stuff and have a way to, I was going to say blow your stuff, but I'm trying to keep this uh, family friendly here. So anyway, number four, keep your stuff clean. All right, so the fifth and final thing um, that I think every photographer should have to start out with is going to be some sort of a way to keep your gear safe. Um, I don't care if it's a backpack. I don't care if it's a, a satchel or a Merce, man purse, whatever you're into, um, some sort of way to, you guys can't see me anymore, can you? Let me try to go like this. If you guys see me looking to the side, I've got my, um, my monitor on the side, which is actually kind of stupid now that I think about it, because it has me looking that way instead of putting it 
on top of the camera, but it's because I'm waiting for my adapter to show up, which is gonna hold my shotgun mic and my monitor above the camera. Um, until that piece shows up, I have to keep the shotgun mic on the camera and my monitor to the side. So anyway, if you see me staring to the side, you know why. So make sure it's in frame. This is my camera backpack. Um, this is the uh, Peter McKinnon slash Nomadic um, camera bag. Uh, I'm actually gonna do a full on review slash unboxing slash all that works in an upcoming episode. So we'll dive into that later, but just kind of showing you what I'm using. I'll put that down for now. Um, sucker's actually pretty heavy because I've got a bunch of gear in there. Um, but long story short, you don't have to get that backpack or any backpack for that matter. Um, you just need to have some sort of a way to keep your stuff safe. Um, I do recommend something that has um, at least water resistant materials, if not a full on um, rain fly. I think they call them rain flies, but it's like a cover that'll keep your gear protected because sometimes you get caught in the rain. Sometimes you've got that friend, we all have that friend who does things like spill water because they're clumsy or because, I don't know, that's what they do. Um, but long story short, you wanna have some sort of way to protect your gear um, and some sort of way to carry it with you because sometimes you gotta just throw it on your back or whip the satchel over because you've got the Merce and run with, with your stuff to go get whatever you're trying to get. So um, whatever you do get though, make sure it's padded and make sure most importantly, that it holds all your gear. Um, don't be like me. I bought a camera bag that I thought looked cool and then it didn't fit my gear. So then I bought another camera bag and that fit my gear for six months, maybe a year. And then I got more lenses and I was like, oh, I need another camera bag. So I got my third camera bag. And then I decided I wanted to carry my laptop with me. I wanted to carry other travel type stuff. And so that backpack was no longer big enough. So what I ended up buying was the Peter McKinnon bag, which is pretty giant, honestly. It fits all my gear, my laptop, clothes for travel, everything. It's actually a whole system, which is where you saw the um, these two. Um, like I said, we'll dive into that in a different video, but the point is, is get a bag that's gonna fit what you need right now, and maybe a little bit more that we can kind of grow into it. Um, once you get way down the line and you start getting fancy with it, and I say fancy with it, you're not really being fancy with, with it, but um, what I ended up doing is having a travel bag, which is my Peter McKinnon bag. It's big, it's heavy, it's got all the stuff in it. And then I've got just a sling. Shout out to the Merce, right? Um, it's not really a Merce, but anyway. Um, I've got a sling that's small. It only fits my camera and one lens. Um, and then a little bit of extra space for a few batteries, a few cable, cables, things like that. But that's kind of like my on the go, quick, everyday carry bag. So I've got the two different options. That way I don't have to carry all my stuff if I don't want to, but then I've also got a quick. So I've got a quick one and I've got a, a everything one kind of a thing. So anyway, long story short, pick something that's gonna fit your needs. Uh, make sure it's something that you're, you're comfortable carrying every day. And my biggest advice to you is get something that doesn't look like a camera bag. Why? Because uh, stuff gets stolen. So, you know, I've seen ca camera bags that right on the back it says like, photography or like some giant camera picture or something and I'm just like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I've actually ever seen a camera bag that says photography on the back, but you get my point. Um, you can tell when it's a camera bag, so try to make it less like a camera bag. Um, but in review, we've got the five things. So we've got uh, memory cards, batteries, a way to clean your gear, a way to carry your gear with a backpack, and uh, photo editing software to edit your photos. I know those were completely not in the five order that I set them originally, but it doesn't matter. I still covered the five. Um, that is my opinion. I would love to hear yours, so feel free to leave it in the comments, and we can kind of, you know, discuss back and forth on what you think the most important bits are. And uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the video. And what I didn't say in the intro, and I'm going to say it today. I actually realized that after the intro ended is um, the YouTube spiel, right? So every YouTube video you watch, it's gonna be the, the same old story. If you like this, hit like, make sure you subscribe, smash the bell buttons, click, 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 click. I'm not gonna do all that. Um, my personal opinion is if you like this content, you're probably gonna like it. If you wanna see more of this content, you're probably gonna subscribe. Um, I shouldn't have to ask you to do it. I shouldn't have to make you feel guilty about doing it, right? The whole, repetitively asking things. So my stance is this, 
This is the only time you're going to hear me say that. And going forward, I'm just going to deliver my content. And if that results in you guys doing the YouTube thing, great. If not, it is what it is, right? Because at the end of the day, the, the whole purpose of this channel is for me to grow as a photographer and to hopefully share that with you guys. So anyway, I'll get off my little uh, YouTube soapbox, if you will. But I did want to give you that heads up in case you ever wondered, why doesn't he say that? Um, but anyway, those are my five things that I think you should get as a beginner photographer. Um, and I think you should already have as a, you know, as a semi-pro or a pro. And uh, join me next week. We will have the five things that I think are overrated, um, at least for a beginner, and that I don't think you should waste your money on quite yet. Ah oh, man, I'm out of vodka. I guess the video's over.